Hi, I'm Virginia from Wright Clinic and here with me today is Dr. Nichols. Dr. Nichols earned her PhD in nutrition and health sciences, specializing in cancer cell signaling from Emory University. Additionally, she holds a master's degree in technical and professional communication. Emma has been a medical writer since about the year 2000 and has helped hundreds of MDs and PhDs and PharmDs to enter into the field of medical writing through her courses and books. And since 2015, she has been the founder and CEO of Nascent Medical LLC and large team of excellent freelance medical writers. And just to say, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited too, because when I first started out in medical writing, your name was one of the very first names that I saw. And I saw your name on Udemy and I was like, well, there are courses on medical writing. This is, you know, going to be really helpful. And so it was, it was really nice to kind of finally meet you this way, face to face after so many years, because you were really um, quite pivotal at the beginning of my career. So it's really a pleasure. Um, so it's great to get to know you um, in this special ep episode and introduce you to the uh, medical writing group that we have and our audience and anyone watching or listening online. So let's start with what do you do and how did you get into it? Oh, yes, the big question. So if I ramble on, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. But, um, yeah, so a very long time ago, I got into uh, so graduate school. And uh, right in the middle of graduate school, I had what they call a dark night of the soul moment where, you know, you got the, the, you got the ladder, you're climbing the ladder of, of success and you realize you're in the, your ladder's up against the wrong wall, basically. Um, so what I realized is I really loved science, but it was, you know, a lot of people in, in graduate school feel this way, I think. But it's just a really difficult thing to get a PhD, any advanced degree, but like a PhD, it's like that it's like a very um uh it's a difficult thing to write your dissertation and especially with experiments, they fail all the time. And I'm like, this is not for me. And then, you know, I'm going into academia, I didn't necessarily relish that path of doing a postdoc. And so I really literally had like one afternoon in my lab where I was just like weeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was like, I don't know what to do. I, I had put three years into it. I didn't want to quit, but I couldn't see how I could go forward. And it really, I felt like I was struck by a bolt of lightning um, where it was like a voice almost outside of myself. I know it's kind of it sounds a little weird, but it said, you know, Emma, what about writing, combining science with writing? And I didn't know anything that I could do that or if that was a thing, but I was able to research that even online back in 2000, that uh, the, National Association, the National Association of Science Writers, it was an organization. And uh, I reached out to several people in that organization and very kindly they got back to me. And um, so I sort of went from there. And even in graduate school, which I was able to finish my PhD, but uh, I uh, even in graduate school, I was editing dissertations and things like that. So it was uh, something that I wanted to do. And, you know, at that moment, it was just uh, when I thought about science writing, you know, I said to my version of God, which is very like <laughs> sort of open-ended, but uh, I said, you know, if, if you help me with this, I will and it makes, still makes me emotional 20 something years later. Like if you help me with this, I will help anybody who wants to get into this. That is similarly miserable. Turns out a lot of people that are PharmDs, MDs, PhDs are not so happy doing what they do. They're away from their family. And, um, but you still want a career where you can use all that hard work that you put into your science degree. So medical writing is that career. If you have the ability to write, and you obviously have the science background. So um, I want to stop there in case I'm rambling on. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. <laughs> it's totally okay. fine. <laughs> All right. So um, to continue on, I'm only at 2000, but like I hung up my shingle. And then for about 10 years, I was a one person shop. And Really, it's I see I've seen the field evolve amazingly. I used like people didn't used to know at all what a medical writer is. Now they kind of know. They've heard of it. So, <laughs> um, but uh, for I was full t you know full time after I finished my degree, um, 
full-time freelance, always have, you know, it's been a great career, uh, always, you know, six figures and up multiple six figures and things. So it's been, and I would encourage, you know, anybody that's not happy to really try it, like try to reach out and get some clients and try to do the things that, you know, you'll listen to you in a podcast or, you know, books, courses, there's a lot of those available these days. So just try it and uh, you don't have to be miserable anyway so uh and then 2010 i had given so many responses by email like how do you get into medical writing and i'd write these long emails back and eventually made it into a series of pdfs which became a course and then i sort of made it go online 2017 um so i had this course and um i also simultaneously uh wanted to use subcontractors in my business but that can be a big fail if you're not really careful about who you subcontract to. So what I would do, it just kind of came together. People from the course, uh, the people that did really well or that I could see real talent, uh, they would, I would offer them writing work. And so that has grown into Nascent Medical, uh, which is the company that I now run. And we serve a lot of clients and a lot of um, medical writers work in that for me. So it's amazing. So amazing <laughs> yes so yeah. here we are so that's really inspiring story i love how you went from you know almost having a moment of inspiration to then completely changing career and then encouraging other people who are also in a difficult spot to mm-hmm. essentially get into what you're doing and then enabling them through your courses and then also building a business around it so that they can actually benefit and mm-hmm. and build their life around it as as an actual career so that is really really cool so if you are um where are you based you are based in in the u.s yeah i'm actually in florida at this point enjoying the beach the ocean is right out there so there you go she's got it all she's got fix six figures and a a company at business and she's helping people and she's also by the beach so what else can you ask for you So uh, so what do you know now that you wish you knew earlier to help you get a head start in your career? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, one thing I sort of picked up on right away, luckily, and I think everybody should, if they're wanting to work with clients, should, should think this way, is always think of the value that you can add. And so when you reach out to clients, um, you want to make sure that you don't sort of like try to sell yourself and how great you are and blah, blah, blah. You really try to look at uh, what a client might need. Okay. And that might involve looking at their press releases or being real specific and targeted towards them and how you might be able to help. And Virginia, what you're doing, I mean, putting out a podcast, I know it's a lot of work um, and to do that and you know, it's value add. And, you know, it might seem like, oh, my God, you know, so much work and all that. But it, it pays back, right? It pays back. I mean, I'll always remember this. You know, that's that's nice. And so, um, yeah, anything you can do to add value. So start out that way. And um, don't think of what it, what's in it for you because clients can really tell that. And then um, – I would say also when you're starting out, samples don't have to be published, all right? So I would recommend, and I used to think, oh, I, I've got to have all these samples and I'm new and I don't know what I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. You could, If you write a couple of really great samples, and especially if you have a dream client that you would love to work for, um, so I would make even like a list of 10 dream clients that you have and think about like what kind of sample might they want to see from me whether it's you know a needs assessment um, if it's the autism society write a piece on autism uh, whatever like something like it's really specific to a client it's a lot of work most things that are uh, good in life are a lot of work but um, it's it's good to have those samples and you don't need to have them published if they're published that's great but just you know have them to give all right so there's that and then I would also say um, you know, be careful if you're referring other writers. You might meet writers at AMWA 
and they have a very engaging personality and that's great, but don't refer writers to clients unless you've actually seen their writing. So that's kind of important. Otherwise, because that can backfire on you, even though you're trying to help them. Um, and then even just a resume sometimes doesn't really tell you how, how someone's going to do or a potential client that you refer. Okay. So just be careful. Cause I've been burned a few times, <laughs> honestly, just. I'm very much an optimist, so, um, but you have to be careful on that. So that's the only thing. I'm trying to think of anything else, but no, I can't really think of anything. Um, but yeah, just Amazing. have confidence. Yeah, have confidence. I think that's yeah. so important. And, and I agree. I think if you are ever going to refer work to someone else, that you need to know that person and you need to know some kind of level of, what kind of writing they do and and how yeah. reliable they are um and also you know discuss with them first before you refer them because yeah. they might not be available i think it's mm -hmm. it's so important to check um before you refer someone because that's that's another way it could backfire if you say oh i mm -hmm. recommend this person really highly and they have an amazing portfolio and this and that and you really sell them but then they're not available it's like why yeah. did you put in all that effort so True. um so yeah that's that's really good advice thank you for sharing that so i suppose as a uh, final point what's what's next on the horizon for you so what are you working on now and where do you see yourself going what would you like to grow and how are you kind of getting on with your business and uh, what you, i i uh, also wanted to mention that you released a free ai course recently and you also have a podcast on uh, FDA approvals, which is really great. And you also have a podcast on medical writers from 2020 as well, which is a nice little capsule from, from that time period. Um, so go check that out, definitely. And uh, and yeah, so so uh, I've given a few bits and bobs that I've seen you working on at the moment, but what would you like to highlight? Yeah, yeah. So obviously I've seen the industry change, right? It used to be there's a blue ocean, right? If you've heard of that as a marketing term where there's no other people around yeah. to do what you do. And now it's like not such a blue ocean. There's a lot of medical writers out there, a lot of people. And, um, you know, I say that's a, a great thing. It gives us more, it builds awareness of what we do. And then, you know, the healthcare industry, medical writing tracks with the healthcare industry and you know that's not getting any smaller right we're all aging and you know medical care is just and such a need for education in medicine and all and like my podcast as you mentioned the new fda approvals podcast that's like a really great way for me to learn stay abreast of what's going on um and it's you know i just started it uh, i've got like 36 episodes and i do it every week and it's just amazing, like all the stuff that's coming out, all the different mechanisms, all, all the different classes of agents. So while there are a lot of medical writers out there, you know, don't get discouraged because we, we need all of us to communicate effectively and teach, you know, clinicians or whatever it is we do in medical writing. Um, so I do have, you said I promote my stuff, so I will <laughs> That. But I have, if you're interested in getting into medical writing, I still have the six week course, numeral six week course.com. And it's this uh, sort of survey of the field. And um, it needs to be updated because obviously we have a little thing coming along called generative AI that's maybe blindsided some of us. Um, yeah. but, um, I'm getting more interested in that and how we need to apply that in medical writing. And we all do need to sort of keep up to date on that and learn that. And um, if you're interested in just, I, I developed a short course. It was like two weeks ago. It's a free course and you can access that at learnamastyle.com, learnamastyle.com. And because, you know, we still have to know editing and grammar and writing skills. And we still have to understand all those things and also apply it, like work with AI in co-creating with it. So. Um, and that's a big deal. <laughs> so um, at the time when you said that this might come out, then, um, you know, what I have available will be online, hopefully. So there will be, you know, more training on that kind of thing. So that's, uh, that's really all I got. And <laughs> I am happy to reach out, reach out to me on LinkedIn, if you'd like, um, just to message me, I'm, I'll try to respond.
Yeah, definitely. That's how I got her on the podcast, by the way. I <laughs> sent her a message on LinkedIn. <laughs> And she responded really quickly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'll definitely leave a link. <laughs> Did yeah. you say that coffee you're drinking? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's me, so. Yeah, it's morning for you. It's um, afternoon for me. So, th thank you again for for taking your morning. I know mornings can be really precious. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> I'll definitely leave the LinkedIn uh, of um, Dr. Emma Hit Nichols in the description below, so you can click on that and connect with her, send her a message, and also a link to her free AI course and her six week course as well. And also anything new that she is coming out with around this time, I will link that below. So I'm sure Emma will provide the links and you are welcome to go and check all of that out and learn from Emma. So definitely listen to her podcast as well, FDA approvals, which is really interesting. And it's, it's always a great achievement for medical writers when something goes over the line and actually makes it, you know, onto the shelf in, in a hospital, in a pharmacy or as a medical device or anywhere. Um, and even if it's a procedure, so I know that diagnostics also have to go through um, approvals or even surgeries and things like that. So there's there's such a wide range of things that you are needed for as a medical writer. And I love that Emma has highlighted that today. So don't feel bogged down by AI. We've just got to work with it, as as Emma said. And I agree. Beast. <laughs> Sorry? We've got to tame the beast. Tame Sorry. the beast. I love that. <laughs> No, don't apologize. That's, that's definitely going to be a highlight of the podcast. <laughs> so, Tame the beast that is AI. I love that. It's a great final thought to end on. So thank you so much again, Emma, for your time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's a great thing you're doing. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for watching or listening, and I'll see you at the next episode. Bye. Bye.